Good morning, everybody. So we're back today with Sports Management English on week four. Time is going so fast, as we say in English, time flies, right? Time flies when we're having fun. <laughs> I don't know if many people are having fun these days, but uh, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, right? Uh, well, as you guys know, our online sessions are going to be extended at least one more week. So we've got a couple more weeks of this going on. Um, today we're going to talk about well, we're going to talk about many things, but the theme of this, the theme of this chapter is going to be all about living abroad. Hewe uh, chorokyo, right? Um, so I think that's really important uh, when we're talking about living abroad. When we're talking about business majors, right? People are talking about sports business. You guys already know, and many of you have already told me that. Uh, the uh, sports business is like really big abroad. It's much bigger than Korea. So I, I suspect that a lot of people are going to be moving abroad or studying abroad or doing internships abroad or at least paying attention to life abroad a lot. Okay. So this this week we're going to focus about uh, living abroad as it affects business and your and your daily life. Okay. So I think it's kind of an interesting unit. Uh, it's usually fun. It's really fun. We get to do this unit when we're all in class together, but, but, um, not, not this time, right? Okay. So, so the first thing I want to ask you guys is how are you holding up? How are you holding up these days? Holding up. What does that mean? Hmm. Well, Holding up is a kind of English expression. It means, are you feeling okay? Right? Are you guys feeling okay? Everybody, you've been stuck inside of your house probably for a long time. I know I saw a few students on campus, not too many though. Are you feeling okay? Are you holding up okay? Are you getting enough exercise? These days start to feel kind of tired pretty easily, right? Because we're not able to exercise as much as we should be. Yeah, exercises, as you guys know, sports majors know exercise is important, not just for your body, but also for your brain. Are you getting out? Are you getting to do exercise? Well, I can't go to the gym. I don't want to go to the gym, but I do go to the mountain behind Namsul University sometimes. There's usually not very many people there, so I don't have to get close. So I'm still practicing social distancing. How do you guys exercise while still practicing social distancing? Do you do it? I'm sure you do. I'm sure you find a way. Are you able to meet friends and family? I'm not really able to meet my friends or family too much, but I do see the other NAMSOL professors around and I do talk to them a bit. Uh, we don't really go out and do anything, but I do get to talk to them. And it's it's important to have somebody to talk to at this time. So that's why I don't mind if you guys send me cacao talk messages sometimes, although I can't always answer very quickly. And I get so many messages these days. But I hope that you're able to have contact with your friends and family. So do you feel gloomy? Are you feeling sad these days or are you feeling good? Hopefully, if you're getting exercise and eating well and able to talk to family and friends, that you're feeling good. And what are your plans? What are your plans coming up for the next few weeks? Hopefully, in the next month or two, social distancing will start to be lessened a little bit, and we will be we'll we'll be able to get on with our normal lives, right? But they're saying it might take up to a year for everything to get back to normal again, which is hard to think about, right? But I think in Korea, things are getting back to normal a little bit nowadays. What are your first plans? What's the first thing that you're going to do when you start, when we're start to able to go out again? I can't wait to, wait to ride my bike and meet my friends, go out to my favorite Thai restaurant, and as you guys know, who have me before, I really like to play board games. And I can't play any board games. I can't play any sports when we are practicing social distancing, right? So my big plans is to go out, kick around the soccer ball, go to the gym, play board games with my friends, and go out to my favorite restaurants when finally we are able to do something again. 
How about you? Uh, first things first, before we get into the chapter, I want you to think about the quiz, right? We're going to have a quiz starting April 10th at 12 p.m. So that's April 10th, 12 p.m. At lunchtime, it's going to start. And you can take it until April 15th at 12 p.m. So you've got about five days to take it. You can take it any time during those days. Okay. It's on my class portal. You guys know you, you signed up for the class portal last week. So neolms.com backslash nomsol English, the one that we signed up for last week and some of you have already used before. It's going to be 25 questions, 25 multiple choice questions. So you can choose A, B, C, D. So I think that's usually uh, a little bit easier for students, right? If we have multiple choice, uh, because it jogs your memory, you can remember something that you, if you if you can read it there, it's gonna pop in your head, right? So remember, this is your multiple choice, and this is not meant to really challenge you. This is to see that you know you come to the class and you've been been paying attention and you're participating in the class. This is not my goal is not to give you guys a bad grade here or really really challenge you. <laughs> Let's make sure that, to measure your participation, to measure how much you are taking part in the class, right? Uh, you're going to have 60 minutes to take it. In my experience, 60 minutes is more than enough time to take this test um, or take this quiz. I'm sorry, it's not a test; it's a quiz. If uh, remember, there's once you start it, once you start, then you have to finish it. If you have a problem, your computer shuts down when you're taking it, just send me an email. I'm not gonna give you an F for a technical problem. Just let me know and we, we'll fix it, okay? We will fix it. Okay, and overall, this is your participation score, remember? So total, this is gonna be worth about 2.5% of your final grade. So those are kind of small, but you know, every little bit counts every little bit counts. So 2.5% of your final score, it's measuring how much you participate. It's not a test score, but a participation score. And remember, participation is half of your final grade. Okay. All right, so do you want to live abroad? Have you ever thought about living abroad? Why do you want to live abroad? What's your goal to live abroad? So today we're gonna to talk about advice about living abroad. Uh, what kind of advice, what's important to know? What is important to remember when you're living abroad, when you're staying abroad, when you're traveling abroad for business? What's some important facts that we need to remember? We're gonna talk about asking questions. Asking questions, of course, very, very important when you're traveling, living abroad, using another language, and we're going to focus on simple present. It's a kind of basic English grammar. You already familiar with simple present forms of verbs. We're going to talk about customs. Remember, customs between different cultures are usually very, very different. Uh, the, the customs from Korea are very different from the customs from America. The customs from America are very different from the customs from Guatemala. The customs from Guatemala are very different from the customs of Tibet, right? So um, we're talking about customs a little bit and, and getting familiar with customs and just basically how to talk about customs, how to talk about the different ways that we behave. And we talked about that a little bit on the first week of class, right? When we talked about different kinds of cultures. We're going to talk expre using expressions and matching beginnings and endings. So this is sort of like um, just a kind of conversation practice, a kind of writing practice that we're going to do today. And there, these questions, these expressions are going to revolve around life abroad and uh, the facts of life of living abroad, right? And we're going to talk about making small talk. Making small talk is 
one of the customs of Western culture, particularly of American or Canadian or British culture. Uh, making small talk lets people know that you're polite and that you care about them uh, and that you're being cordial with people that you meet. And we're going to talk about formal versus informal language. As you know, Korean has a very strict formal versus informal language. English also has it. It's a little bit less strict, but we do have it as well. And as you can guess, in business environments, you're usually going to use formal, formal forms of language. Okay, well, let's talk about where in the world are you? So have you ever thought about living abroad? I know many of you have traveled abroad, but did you ever think about living there? As we said before, I think that many students, especially business students, it's probably very, very important that they spend at least some time living abroad. And many, many students are going to uh, live abroad for a very long time or maybe forever. I'm living abroad. I'm living in Korea, right? So, and I've been in Korea for quite a long time. So if I can do it, I'm sure you can do it too. Why would you like to live abroad? Why would you like to live abroad? And which country would you like to live abroad in? This is important for communication and conversation. It's the kind of question I really wish that I had you guys in class with me for. First, let's take a look at some pictures here. Let's let's do a little little conversation here. I know we can't talk too much, but but it's still um it's still good brainstorming activity. Let's look at that first picture. You know where that is? Well, that's a very good filter, isn't it? Where is that? Hint, it's in America. It's the biggest city in America, United States of America. Where is it? Yes, that's right. That's New York City. New York City, as we call it, the Big Apple. Probably a lot of you have been to New York City. I went to New York City. I remember I went there first time on my high school senior trip. It was really, really exciting. And I know many of my students often end up working in New York City at some point. And business students definitely going to end up there. Do you guys know New York City's professional sports teams? What are they? That's right, the Yankees. You, I'm sure they're very popular, right? Where's this? Think you know, of course that is. That's right, it is Tokyo, Japan. Also, it's a very popular city for Koreans to travel to. I know these days, Korea and Japan has some diplomatic problems, but that shouldn't stop us from, from once things are better, from traveling there, right? I know many students travel there, many Korean students study there, work there, um, do tourism there, and many Japanese do the same in Korea. I think this is like a typical Japanese look, a typical city. You guys know this one? Where is that? That's right. That is the Kremlin in Moscow, Moscow, Russia. Right. Uh, not as many of my students travel to Russia. It's a little bit more difficult for for Korean students to get to, but it's on my list, and it's a big a big place for business too, right? A big place for business. Um, although they've been closer to countries like China historically and so on. But, but many Koreans there doing business and of course, many Russians living in Korea doing business. Mm, Russia's pretty cold though. Then again, Korea has been pretty cold this year too, right? Where is this? Yes, my, my football fans, they all know where this is. This is beautiful. Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And what's the name of that statue? Anybody remember? Mm, quiz question. No, no, I don't ask that kind of question on the quiz. But of course, also many Koreans living and working in Brazil 
some of my students are really excited to see that culture was so different from foreign cultures that they're used to, like in, in, in Japan or China or in America, in Canada or Europe. Um, they're really excited by that and excited by the Portuguese language. Their, their national language is Portuguese. And one more. You guys know this one? Yes, that's Singapore. Singapore is a city and a country. It's a really lovely place. I like to visit Singapore about once a year. I just got back from Singapore. Um, I actually went there during the time of the virus. Uh, so uh, I was a little bit scared. I was a little bit scared, but right when I got back to Korea, Korea had more virus than Singapore. So, but they seem to be recovering like Korea. And if you haven't visited Singapore, I recommend you go there at least one time. It's just a city, but it feels like a country. They got a lot of good food there. Um, I love eating in Singapore. I love eating in Singapore. So would you like to live in any of these places? If you could work somewhere, where would you work? Not Korea, not counting Korea. I know many of you are attached to Korea, but if you were going to live and work abroad, where's the place you want to work? Many students are telling me they want to live and work in America, and that's because America has a really big sports culture. A lot of students are interested about working in England because, or in Western Europe because they're interested in Premier League or European League soccer, European League football. That's possible. Other students want to grow sports in Asia, so they wanted to live somewhere like Taiwan or Japan. How about yourself? I'm not going to ask this question on the quiz, but I might ask this kind of essay question on your on your midterm test or on your final test. So do some time, take some time and think about what are the reasons you want to do that? Are they related to work or play or just your sense of adventure? So we're going to talk about giving advice on life abroad. Which piece of advice are true for your country. So we're going to do a little bit of matching here, uh, trying to figure out which advice, which set, which part of a sentence fits the other part. So here are some um, half of a sentence for eight different pieces of advice. So let's look at these. And I want you guys to try to think about what could possibly be the answer to this. What could possibly be the answer to this? You might have to pay two months rent. You might have to pay two months rent. So imagine you move to another country, you have to pay rent, right? You have to pay rent. In many Western countries don't have a Jonse system. So you just have to pay your Olse every month. Uh, so you might have to pay two months rent when? Well, when you first move, move into an apartment in America or Canada, you, you're going to have to probably pay two months rent in advance. Maybe Korea has a similar system, like a, how can I say security deposit, kyongbigum, or something. And when you move out of an apartment in, an, in America, your landlord is probably going to check for something. Well, let me show you the answers to these first. Let me show you the answers as well. Okay, that's probably a little bit better. So let's, let's match them up. Let's match them up. I'm going to do that right now. So uh, it says, number one, you have to pay two months rent. Which one here fits it? Which one here on the right side fits it? You might have to pay two months rent. When you move out of an apartment, which one fits? You'll need a state ID. Well, let's do it here, actually. Um, I believe maybe, well, you need a state ID. In America, you're going to need a state ID, an ID card to buy alcohol. When you move out of an apartment, the landlord will check for any damages.
um, you have, might have to pay two months rent when you move. It's actually, this one says when you move out of an apartment, it should be when you move in, in an apartment, okay? You can use your bank card from Korea, where? Probably at most ATMs. If it has a Visa or MasterCard symbol on it, you can probably use it at most ATMs. You need to be registered to a doctor. You need to be registered for a doctor to get medical treatment. So you probably have to go and sign your name and show your, your ID card again and everything and write your insurance number down. Kind of similar to what you're doing in Korea. <coughs> Excuse me. Most employers include medical insurance. So your employer who you work for is probably going to provide your medical insurance if you live in in, um, in 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 another country. It's very important, especially with the COVID-19. Uh, some people maybe have a little bit misunderstanding about about medical insurance in in United States at least. Uh, in Western Europe and Canada, medical insurance is usually provided by the government, like Korea. Um, but places like Canada and Western Europe maybe have like even more money provided by the government. Um, I like Korea's system, it's pretty good. Um, America, on the other hand, well, you have some jobs like a teacher uh, or uh, a teacher is like really good. Um, a government worker, these people, university professor, they get very good medical insurance in America. It's kind of similar to Korea's um, and they usually don't have any problems. They don't really pay. They don't pay very much money, very little. They they pay uh, maybe same like Korea. But there are many, many jobs in America, like a 25, 30, 40 percent of people don't have insurance or they don't have very good insurance. Um, it's some jobs, many jobs in America. Unfortunately, that's kind of a problem. But if you work in like what we call the public sector, like for the government or working like as a coach at a university, you should have insurance and it should be it should be a pretty good insurance, pretty much cover everything. So it's a little bit misunderstanding about that, um, about that kind of system. On the other hand, still, uh, many employers don't really provide a very good insurance in America. It's a kind of national problem. In any case, I, want, I just want you guys to understand that a little bit because I know many of you will be will be living in America for at least a little bit. Using a prepaid plan, number seven, prepaid. Well, what do we talk about prepaid? Korea uses prepaid for uh, a lot of foreigners here do it, right? A lot of foreigners here do it. So use a prepaid plan. It's easier than setting up a phone account. So if you're just staying somewhere for a short time, you don't have a national ID, you might just use a prepaid phone. And in this case, uh, It'll just, you just pay your maybe, you know, $10, $20, $30 a month, and you can use your phone for, you know, whatever, how much, however much it is, three, three gigabyte or something. So it's usually easier than setting up a phone account. And if you move into an apartment, a lot of apartments in America or Canada, Wi-Fi will be included. Wi-Fi will be included. So these are some pieces of advice. Um, maybe if I give you some kind of test, I might ask you to match these up, match these up with each other. Okay, and which of these are true for your country? Which of these are true for Korea? I think uh, many of these are kind of similar. How about in Korea about a, a state ID for alcohol? Do you need to use it? I think you don't, because I think Korean students are out there buying alcohol but I think in in America, if you try to buy alcohol, if you if you're like un, if you're 30 years old or younger, they are always asking at the at the Pyeongchang at the convenience store. They're always asking like for your ID. Even me until a few years ago, they are asking my ID in the liquor store in the alcohol store to buy some alcohol. Um, so that <laughs> I think in Korea they don't really ask it too much. They do ask for cigarettes though in Korea, right? I'm not sure. 
Okay, just different culture. Okay, question forms. It says use the present simple to make questions for these answers. So you're going to see the answer. I want you to think about what is a good question. I'm from a small town in Jolanamdo. I'm from a small town in Jolanamdo. Okay, write down what you think a question could this for this could be. Just write it down. I usually start around 9.30 a.m. What could that question be? I speak Korean, English, and German. What kind of question might that be? In a small apartment in the center of town. In a small apartment in the center of town. I usually come by bus. I usually come by bus. I usually go on holiday in August. I usually go on holiday in August. Sometimes in the company cafeteria, but I usually go to the cafe down the street. So what, can, what could these questions be? Have you written them all? Well, there's more than one answer for some of them, but in general, I think you should be able to get a basic idea of what they're asking. Okay, so the first one, where do you come from? I'm from a small town in Jolanando. Right, they're asking a little bit, a little bit more clear version of where are you from. What time do you usually start work? I usually start work at around 9:30. It's different in America. Some people start at like eight. Some people start 10. Some people have very different hours. What languages can you speak? I speak Korean, English, and German. I know everybody here speaks Korean and English. How about another language? And where do you live? Well, I live in a small apartment in the center of town. So talking about the location of where you live. I live in, Americans might describe, you know, the, 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 the little town that they live in or the little suburb or the street or the part of town. How do you come to work or how do you come to school? Well, I usually come by bus. I usually come by bus. When do you usually go on holiday? I usually go on holiday in August. When do you, where do you usually eat lunch? Sometimes I eat lunch in the company cafeteria. So that's like the, you know, the work, how can I say, shikdang. But I usually go to the cafe down the street. So um, here we're using the present simple form of the verbs, right? The form of the verbs. So come, go, eat, speak, start, am. That's the present simple form of the verb. So not on the quiz, but on the midterm, I may ask you to match up some of these. Sorry guys, I'm sucking on like, um, I'm right now I'm sucking on a little kind of lozenge, like for a, my throat is very dry to talk. So I'm sucking on some little candy here right now. So you probably, I'm sorry you can hear that a little bit. But I'm gonna, I might ask you on, on the test, on the midterm test to match some of these up. 
that'll be very similar or the same as this. Okay. All right, next slide. So we're going to talk about customs. What is a custom? Uh, custom. So custom in Korea is before you enter a home, you take off your shoes. This is a custom in Asia a lot. And actually, I'm American, but my mom made me take off my shoes also when I come into the house. How do you feel if somebody comes into your house but didn't take off their shoes? Hmm? Hmm. You probably don't like it very much, right? My mom doesn't like it because it gets the carpet messy. Americans, unlike Koreans, have like a soft carpet often in their house. And I really think I don't like to wear shoes on it, but some Americans do. I think Koreans know about that. It's kind of a strange thing that Americans do is wear their shoes in the house. But actually not all of them do. It, it kind of depends on the people. It depends on the house, depends on the area. Okay. And the last one that I wrote there is the 4th of July. The 4th of July is like the America's Independence Day when America got their independence, Dogrim, from Yonggu in 1776, okay? So on the 4th of July, Americans have like parties and picnics, and uh, I think you guys really like it, and they drink, and there's like so many fireworks. I cannot sleep at night. I cannot sleep at night. It's so loud. It's so very, very loud, okay? Um, so that's a kind of like special custom that if you go to America, you might enjoy, or you might hate it if you can't sleep but probably somebody will like invite you to a 4th of July picnic. Okay, I put some customs here. Do you, can you see what's happening there? That's called throwing the bouquet, throwing the bouquet. So I think maybe Koreans do this now, right? I think I saw this at a Korean wedding. So the woman throws a bouquet and all of the unmarried women try to catch it. And the one who catches it is going to be the one who gets married next. Yeah, you know this, right? Maybe you saw it in a movie too. And I think you can you can write me in an email, tell me is that is that correct? I think Korea some Korean weddings do this now too, right? You know this custom? Yes, that is the running of the bull. The running, I'm sorry, not the running of the bull, that's called bullfighting bullfighting in Spain. They have a very old tradition, many hundreds, maybe even a thousand years old, where they fight this bull, the matador. He fights the bull and then he kills it. He kills it. So some people around the world, including some people in Spain, they object. They think this is a bad sport and we should finish it. What do you think? It's their custom, right? But I don't know. It sounds kind of terrible to me, but but I can't really judge them. In any case, you have to respect it if you go to their country, even if you don't like it. What's this one? They're wearing costumes, right? That's right, it's Halloween. I think most of you guys know Halloween. Kids go around and get candy. They say trick or treat. We watch horror movies. Actually, this was really big when I was young. Nowadays, though, in America, Halloween has become kind of an adult holiday. Adults really like it. Uh, they like scary things. They like to party. Uh, my generation, we are old and we carry the Halloween to our older times. So it's a little bit changed, but kids still do it. But it's not exactly the same as when I was a kid. And what's this? Well, that's, you can see they're wearing the little Chinese traditional costume. That's the Lunar New Year, or we, we call in America sometimes the Chinese New Year. I think you're very familiar with that because Korea also celebrates the Lunar New Year. It's a bit different, but in general, it's kind of similar holiday. And as you know, if you've been to China at that time, or you've been to Singapore or Taiwan or Malaysia, places with big Chinese populations, it's a really big party. Unfortunately, this year, because of the COVID-19, it was a part of the spreading 
of the virus as well, unfortunately, which is a very sad thing to happen because it's a very beautiful holiday. If you've ever been to China to see it. Um, so these are some customs uh, that are really important. And we're going to talk a little bit about customs and ways of speaking and so on. And it's going to be, uh, we're going to talk about it maybe next week and the week after as well. So I want you to put these words in the correct order. These represent custom ways of speaking about certain topics we might call, well, you'll see. But sorry, have to go I now. But sorry, have to go I now. Put that in the correct order. You might need to pause it for a moment, right? Meaning it's been nice you. Meaning it's been nice you. Believe can't how busy it I is. So put these in the correct order, fix them. Journey, have you did a good here? Journey, have you did a good here? Your was how weekend? Your was how weekend? Enjoy rest the of the conference. To talking nice you. To talking nice you. It's weather lovely today. It's weather lovely today. Okay, well, here are the answers. Here are the answers, right? So sorry, but I have to go now. It's been nice meeting you. I can't believe how busy it is. So we might be talking about like the market or the, or the subway. Did you have a good journey here? Was your trip here okay? If you're coming from a, like a business meeting, it's like in another country, it might be kind of like a important question, right? How was your weekend? I ask my students that all the time, right? This is a kind of small talk. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Enjoy the rest of the conference. So conference, right? Your, your big meeting is the conference. Nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. So that's when we want to say goodbye to somebody. It's lovely weather today. And this is, of course, um, kind of important small talk in English, kind of similar to Korean. Did you eat? It's lovely weather. It's nice weather. Wow, what a beautiful day. I don't know why we like to talk about that. Koreans do a little bit too, but I think it's a bit more important in English. For a small talk, polite talk.
Okay. Speaking of the AR again, I can't believe how busy it is. So what's the kind of situation where that might happen? Where we might use that? Sorry, but I have to go now. How was your weekend? Did you have a good journey here? Nice talking to you. It's been nice meeting you. Did you have a good journey here? It's lovely weather today. Enjoy the rest of the conference. So which are things here that you're going to say at the beginning of a conversation? And what are the things here that you might say at the end of a conversation? I can't believe it's how busy. It's probably at the beginning of a conversation, right? How was your weekend is also going to come at the beginning. You're going to ask somebody how their weekend was when you first see them. Did you have a good journey here? Of course, that's when you first meet them, when they've just arrived, you're going to ask this question. It's the same as it's lovely weather. Right in the rest of these here, sorry, but I have to go now. Nice talking to you. Enjoy the rest of the conference and it's been nice meeting you. These are all things you're going to say towards the end, towards the end of your meeting with someone. So remember beginnings versus endings of situations. And I'm not sure I, I, I said it here, but I can't believe how busy it is. It's also probably something you're going to say at the beginning of a conversation. This is probably something that you're going to be more likely to say at the beginning of a conversation rather than at the end to close the conversation or, or to get out of the conversation with the person. Okay, make small talk. Places you can make small talk. On trains or on buses, at work, when you're eating or about eating, talking about weather or talking about sleep. So here, of course, or on a train and a bus, if, if, it's, if the bus is going very s slow or it's been canceled, then you might make smart small talk with somebody, somebody you know. Say, wow, I can't believe I can't believe it's been canceled again. It's so slow. It's like this every day. The other person might say, ah, oh, yeah, tell me about it. Public transportation these days is terrible. I know when I'm waiting for the when I'm waiting for the subway or the train here in Songhan, sometimes you're waiting like a 20, 30, 40 minutes for that train to come. That's the Kyonggi-do time, I always say, right? So small talk, people like to know you identify with them. You feel their pain. You feel their annoyance with the situation. So you can make small talk about the transportation. Okay, about sleep. So how did you sleep? Did you sleep well? This is kind of a good thing when you first meet somebody in the morning, especially somebody you know just a little bit, not really well but not very, very close necessarily. You might say, you know, did you sleep well? Did you, how was the night? Once you know you care about them, it's cordial and it's very polite, very polite. Okay, making small talk about work. Oh, wow, the boss is, boss is really uh, on fire these days, right? Okay, talking about work, it's another uh, way without getting too, too personal, but talking about something at work. Oh, wow, well, yeah, the new cafeteria food at work, it's, it's, uh, it's not very good. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. I, I hate it as well. So this is another way to make small talk. And, of course, again, the weather. It's a lovely day today. The sky is beautiful and big today. And about food, right? We already mentioned, uh, have you eaten, right? How was lunch? We might say that in English. In English, though, we might give like a longer answer than Koreans are used to. Koreans might ask you, right, have you eaten and just say yes. But Americans might want to talk a little about, about what they ate. I always say that's a little bit of a strange thing when my, I ask my students, what did you eat in Korea? 
and they tell me back, oh, I ate uh, bop, rice, I had gogi, right? They don't give me a lot of information. Well, I'm, real, I'm curious though, I always wanna hear, well, what kind of rice, you know? Well, I had bibimbap, I had dokbap, or something like this. Uh, I had samgyapsal with, with soju. Yeah, that's, that's like how Americans like to do small talk. Not everything, not every little detail. I would like to hear a, a, a bit more. I guess, again, it's, it's the custom. It's the custom, and the custom is a bit different than the Korean custom. This is uh, how we make small talk. This is how we make small talk. And many Western, Western countries are very similar. You may find if you're working in an Asian country, they share many similar things to Korea, whether it's China or Japan, Taiwan, even in Southeast Asia, like Vietnam and Thailand, I noticed they have a kind of similar way of talking about these things. Like I know Chinese, Vietnamese, and Thai, they also all ask, have you eaten? Have you eaten rice? It's also an important part of their culture as well. So they have their own ways of making small talk about it, just like Koreans and Americans have their ways. It's just important you familiarize yourself. Since I'm, since I'm American, I'm from the West, and I can tell you a little bit about how I interpret it to work in my country. And I know many of you guys will be will be going there. So, okay, on this slide, let's talk about formal language versus informal language. Okay, so what's formal? What is informal? So formal ways of speaking are ways that are more polite, and ways to show more respect, and they show more distance between the person talking and you. Informal ways of talking are a little bit more friendlier. They show familiarity, that you're familiar with the person. And in America, they don't always show disrespect. They show closeness sometimes. Okay, so looking here, we have some statements that are formal and statements that are informal. So in Korean, you might say, right, you have different levels, three levels like annyeong, Annyeonghaseyo, annyeonghaseyo, which one is informal? Well, annyeong is informal, right? It's friendly between your friends and to people who are younger than you. Informal, on the other hand, annyeonghaseyo, you say to your professors and some people, you can say annyeonghaseyo is really, really formal, right? Well, that's a little bit different maybe from like a business and so on. Businesses will tend to be more formal in their speech okay so if you look here can you give me a copy of the bill so there's a formal statement and an informal statement can you can you tell me what is the other version of can you give me a copy of the bill Well, we might say like an informal, a formal version of that might be, I would be grateful if you could send me your catalog, right? I would be grateful if you could send it to me. So that would probably be something that, well, I look forward to meeting you in person. I look forward to meeting you in person. So I want to meet you in person. So that's kind of formal, actually. That's kind of formal, actually. And that's going to be like, see you at the meeting. See you at the meeting. It's going to be kind of closer to that. Okay. We have some other ones here. They don't necessarily have a match. Would it be possible for you to organize my accommodation? What's accommodation? Well, it's like a hotel or apartment or something. So would it be possible for you to organize my accommodation? That's very formal. That's also very formal. You're asking somebody who you don't know, can you please book my hotel room for me? So if I knew you, I might say, well, I'll, I'll, book, I'll book your hotel room. Or can you book my hotel room? That's informal. 
Thank you for your email received yesterday. Um, this is kind of in the middle between formal and informal. Um, if you're being very formal, you might say, I'm very grateful. Again, this word grateful here means like a really, really thank you. But I think it's more formal than this one, which it matched. Thanks for the message earlier. Thanks for the message. Okay, all the best is like a goodbye. We might write it in the email. It's a kind of informal with best regards is like the formal version of that. I'm sorry, but I can't see you this week. I'm sorry, but I, I can't see you this week. I think that sort of fits in with, please accept my apologies for this understanding. Please accept my apologies. That's a very formal sorry. And this is an informal sorry. Formal, please accept my apologies for this misunderstanding. Informal, I'm sorry, but I can't see you this week. And can you please bring Lars to translate? Well, Lars is a personal name and idem, right? So asking, can you please bring Lars to translate? Now, can is usually less formal than could. So the formal version is, could you possibly arrange an interpreter? Could you possibly arrange an interpreter? Okay. So these again are formal versus informal language. Remember, could is usually more formal than can. It's a more polite way to make a request. So I might ask you guys on the midterm test to find the match the formal statement with the informal statement. Okay. Okay, guys. So we're going to talk a little bit about grammar, about the present simple, which we already mentioned before, versus the present continuous. Well, what is present simple? What is present continuous? Present, of course, means now. So we're talking about actions or states of being that are happening right now. So the simple way to talk about it, and there's a little bit more complicated way to talk about it, that's called continuous. Continuous means showing that not just that it's happening now, like I'm hungry, but that the action is continuously happening. Now, we're just going to talk a little bit about this. If you take my Tsung Gupaihua class, like some of you are, we talk about it a little bit more in depth. But this is still a basic English class, so uh, I want to talk about it so that if we give something on the test or that if you're in a situation where you need to discern the difference between these two things, you can understand at least the basic. And I know many of you already do, so it's just a review for you. But if you want more in-depth, I ask you, please take Tsung Gup Yongohaiha next semester, and we'll talk about this kind of stuff more in-depth, and we can we can actually use it in conversation. Okay, without further ado, present simple versus present continuous. So present simple uses. How do we use present simple? We, we use it for things uh, like habits, okay? Uh, I usually take the bus to come to Namsul University. Um, I usually go to school by bus. I have tennis lessons on Thursdays. I meet my friends for drinks on Friday nights. So anything that's habitual, habit. What's a habit? Well, a habit is something that you do often. You do always. Something that you make a, a habit of. Now we have things that are called bad habits and so on and study habits. It's a little bit different way to use the word habit, but usually it just means something that you do often. So we use the present simple, the present simple form of the verb when we talk about things that we do uh, habitually. So for expressions, uh, uh, you guys have missed this here a little bit. I'm going to have to fix it. Uh, so for time expressions, always, usually, often, 
sometimes, rarely, and never. In these cases, uh, these are words that we use to talk about habits. So usually, often, I often catch the bus. When I don't, I take the subway. So these are uh, kind of adverb phrases that you're going to use before or after a sentence or use the present simple to talk about your habits of behavior. Okay, in the next type of situation where we're going to use the present simple is when we're talking about permanent situations. So these are situations that happen, they're permanent. What's permanent mean? Well, permanent means something that always happens or that happens so much it's almost like forever. So uh, my dad works in an office, right? He's not stopping working in the office. He always works in an office. Or I live in Korea and so on. So in this case, we put the verb in the present in the simple present form. Uh, general truth. It's also kind of similar. The sky is blue. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So what does it mean to set? Well, of course, that means to, to disappear, to go away. The sun sets. The sun sets. So general truths, um, uh, summer is hot, right? Itineraries in timetables, schedules, okay? So itineraries and timetables, we're usually going to use the present simple to talk about them when a bus leaves, when a plane, train, lift leaves. So the bus leaves from Suwon at 8 o'clock and arrives in Seoul at 10 o'clock. In this place, you can see the, again, just want to clarify here, you see the present simple form of the verbs here. Arrives and leaves are present simple. So again, for itineraries, things that tell you when something happens, particularly when transportation happens, so on. You might also, when you're talking about it for going to see a movie, um, Star Wars starts at 8 p.m. Okay, so starts, present simple form of the verb start, and it functions like a timetable. Okay, now present continuous. This is a little bit different, again, to show actions that happen continuously. They will have an end at some point, but they happen continuously there, but they're not permanent necessarily. So what's an example we might say in this case? Well, for actions happening now. Look, the dog is chasing the cat. The dog is chasing the cat. You like that picture? I thought it was pretty cute. I thought it was pretty cute. So now the dog eventually is not going to be chasing the cat. It's, it's an action that's going to have an end, but it's happening right now. Therefore, we're using present continuous. So the time expressions for this might be now, right now, at the moment. So at the moment, the dog is chasing the cat. Can you meet me? Well, at the moment, I'm eating lunch, but I'll meet you after I finished. So these are the time expressions we're going to use with present continuous. Remember it. So for temporary situations, so one day permanent, temporary, something that you will finish. Take a minute, look at that cartoon. Are you sure you're ready to get back on the ice? 
So Angela usually goes ice skating at the weekends or on the weekends. This week, she isn't going ice skating because she has broken her leg. So this week, she isn't, present continuous, going ice skating because she has already broken her leg. Hopefully, her leg is going to heal. It's a temporary situation. In a few weeks, she'll be back out there ice skating. How about you guys? Have you ever broken a leg? It's a very painful situation. I do not recommend it. I do not recommend it. I know you guys are sports guys, sports ladies, so you have definitely broken many bones in your life, I'm sure, right? So time expressions with this this week, this month, this year, tonight, these days. So uh, uh, this month we are we are not having H A V I N G present continuous class. We're not having class because of the coronavirus situation. Because of the coronavirus situation. So again, time expressions to use with these temporary situations where we're talking present continuous ing form of the verb are going to express this that the situation is temporary and that it has an end okay and finally for plans and for future arrangements for plans and for future arrangements. Here you can see a kind of a schedule, right? When you're going to do something. That's the famous transatlantic flight. The transatlantic flight. When are you going to do it? We're flying to New York. Are flying. You have the B verb plus fly plus ing to New York. When? Next week. We are going to Thailand next summer. We are cooking Duen Zhang Chige tomorrow. Okay. So for plans and future arrangements, even though it's the future, it's a little bit confusing, but we're still going to use the present continuous, the present progressive, even when talking about the future. Okay. So remember that sometimes we don't use we don't use the uh, uh, future tense to talk about the future. We can use the present tense to talk about the future. You remember I asked you guys to do your homework about uh, uh, your six sentences about uh, talking about your future goals. Well, those are two ways to talk about the future, and this is another way to talk about the future. So some time expressions in this case. Uh, are uh, to talk about the future, future arrangements using the present progressive next week, next month, next year, today, meaning later today, tonight, meaning, you know, later tonight, or, or tomorrow, which is the one I used also in the example. Okay. So think about speaking here. What do you usually do in the week? What do you usually do during the week? What do you usually do on the weekends? What are you doing this week, this weekend? Well, I'm studying English this weekend. Well, I'm staying home with my family this weekend. Again, remember the be verb am, are, plus the verb plus ing. What do you usually do during the week? Here you're going to use present simple. What do you usually do on the weekends? I usually go out with my friends. It's going to be a little bit uh, different. Usually do present simple. Doing now, doing this weekend, doing in the near future. Then we're going to use the present progressive. 
It's a little bit confusing. We're not going to go too in depth about this in, in my class, but I want you to know it and to understand it for the for the midterm test, at least to understand the basics of this for the midterm test. Again, any questions, please send a message. Okay, well, let's talk about spelling convention just really, really quick here. As you already know, English spelling is kind of hard. I, I didn't make this, but I took it from the internet because I'm not going to ask you guys too much about this, like on a quiz or a test, but you should know it like a little bit, right? You should know a little bit about it. If you're really not interested in it, just skip past it. But I hope that you spell correctly on your test or quiz if I have to ask you to do it. It's not going to be on this quiz coming up, but you should be able to get the spelling right. So, uh, Again, a summary of the rules is at the top of this page. Um, I am, you are, he, she, it, we, they are cooking, right? And then the negative forms of that. So pretty simple. However, verbs that end in an E, we drop the E and add ING. So make becomes making, write becomes writing, drive becomes driving, and so on. Then familiarize yourself with the vowels A, E, I, O, and U. The consonants are all the rest of your letters. This is a really quick review. So sometimes a word ends in a vowel plus a consonant. For example, get, E, T, run, U, N, swim, I, M. Before adding I, N, G, the consonant at the end is doubled. So get becomes getting run becomes running, swim becomes swimming, and so on. But do not double the letter if the word ends in two consonants. So help is, is just P-I-N-G, talk K-I-N-G, work R-K-I-N-G. Do not double the letter if the word ends in two vowels plus a consonant. Look is two vowels, just becomes looking, reading, speaking, 1D, 1K. Do not double the letter if the word has two or more syllables and the last part is not stressed. So, visit, viz, it. The first part is stressed, it's stronger. Viz, it. You can hear that rising, falling. Becomes visiting. But beginning, beginning, the last part is stressed, is stressed, so we double the end. We double the end, B-E-G-I-N-N-I-N-G. -N 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 Do not double the letter if the word ends in a Y or a W, like by is just Y-I-N-G, enjoy, Y-I-N-G, and snow, W-I-N-G. So in that case, do not double the letter. I know there's a lot of rules to remember. You probably already learned them before, I'm sure. Um, but uh, on the quiz, I hope that you, on the test, on the midterm test, on the final test, I hope that you spell the words correctly. Okay? Take your time. If you need to listen to this slide again, you have the sheet for reference. It's a review. Okay, another thing I don't want you to forget, I know there's a lot of things you guys have to remember, but one thing a few weeks ago I gave you an assignment. I asked you to talk about your future, right? Talk about your future. So I want you to please upload those six sentences talking about your future. A few of you already sent me a video, that's really good. A few of you have already sent me your video, but if you haven't, please Make a video on your phone with you talking about your future. I want you to use six sentences. You can go back to weeks one and weeks two and check that grammar. Six sentences using I will. So I will become the CEO of my own company. I'm gonna, I'm going to become a coach of an Asian football team. Okay, anything, just anything that's talking about your future. So you can do this on your phone 
everybody knows how to make a video on their phone and please upload it to our class website by April 30th by April 30th so you have some time to do it a few students have already sent it in my to me in my email that's good I prefer if you upload it to our class website though okay I prefer if you can upload it to our class website by April 30th okie dokie so if you haven't already done that do that that's again for your homework score your homework score then of course don't forget there's a quiz this Friday on my portal Friday at noon already talked about it at the beginning there's 25 questions multiple choice multiple choice everything comes from or is very similar to what we did in the PowerPoint discussions activities and so on okay then in in, in after that we the, the following weeks we will have our midterm test which will be a mix of uh, a multiple choice and some writing part and matching okay that will be a, 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 a bit later, a bit later though. Again, any questions, please send me an email is the best way to get a hold of me. Only send a cacao talk. If you know you want a small talk with me, that's fine, that's okay. But uh, um, you don't have to send a cacao talk about the homework because uh, unless it's a very big emergency, because if you do, then you know I cannot really. If everybody sends a e uh, message on Kakao Talk, I cannot easily get back to all of you guys. I can more easily get back to you in an email. Personally, that's for myself, but I'm always happy to answer your questions on email or Kakao Talk. Okay, okay, guys. Well, um, uh, have a good week. Good luck on the on the quiz, and I will see you or talk to you again next week. Thanks a lot. Take care.